everybody. This is Gene Marks. Welcome back to the Hartford Small Business Head Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Glad that you are listening or watching. My special guest today is Matt McCoy. Matt is a longtime actor. I think you've seen him on various shows. Uh, very well known for his portrayal of Lloyd Pawn on Seinfeld, but he's done a lot of other work in a lot of other places. Uh, and also, he does a lot of work with the Hartford as well. And I have a bunch of questions, Matt, for you about this. So first of all, Fire Thank away. You. Now you said yeah. special guest. Is everybody a special guest or? You, you know, it's a good question. It's yes. Most people are supposed to say you are very, very special on this. But you know what that question that you ask, it makes me laugh. Sometimes whenever I ask somebody a question and then they'll answer back to me like um, that was a good question. You know, I always think to myself, like, so does that mean like all my other questions weren't so? <laughs> they were terrible. They were terrible questions. They were terrible. And this one happens to be good. Count on um, me following suit there, Gene, and really calling out. <laughs> Terrible question. Yeah, I think the reason why people do that is they uh, they just they obviously you know, like a moment to think, you know, and that's what they're doing it for. But it just it always kind of makes me chuckle. Well, so I, I appreciate like, the uh, I appreciate the special moniker you gave me there. Uh, it is it it is well deserved. Um, so we're we're speaking to you from your home in California. Yeah, I, I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I've uh, I've been in the same house for thirty seven years, <laughs> uh, which my wife thought was a starter home. <laughs> a, little, a man of routine. <laughs> a little really did you know that uh, we'd be in here 37 years later. Yeah. But well, I raised, uh, we raised our three kids here, and uh, you know, they're all gone and, and leading really wonderful lives. But this is home. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. So, no desire to empty nest it somewhere else or move into a city somewhere. I, you know, I, I don't. I mean, we're in a city. Uh, God. And we've got a really wonderful neighborhood here. My wife. Uh, works in interior design. So she's done some really wonderful things to our home. And uh, she's got a list uh, somewhere, evidently, of more things uh, that she wants to do. So I hope I, I never find that list. Yeah, I agree. Well, I'll keep you busy for a while. Yeah. Matt, you you know, w- one of the reasons why we're talking to you is that you you have done such great work for the Hartford, you know, over the years as a spokesperson. And I just, you know, first of all, I just, I, I don't work for the Hartford, but I've heard such great things about you. And, uh, I, you know, I, yeah, I know that you've, you, you've had a great relationship with the company. Well, it's very humbling to hear that, that, uh, I mean, I, the Hartford is a, uh, is a gift to me. And I mean that sincerely, uh, as, uh, as the people that I've met, these are remarkable people that work really for a remarkable company. So the fact that I'm associated with them and have been for a number of years, um, I tell you, gifts come, Gene. And uh, they, they, the fact that this has come at this point in my life as well, because yeah. I have been doing what I've been doing for such a long time. And for the relationship with the Hartford to come around now, um, I, I'm so appreciative and really, really grateful to be a small, small spoke in the wheel of such a great company. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. And I've worked uh, with the Hartford for a number of years as well. And I've had a great experience with the company. I mean, with pretty much everybody, except for Alyssa, by the way, she's really a tough cookie. Okay. But that's just between you and me. Okay. Okay. Um, She'll be unplugging you now, Gene. Yeah, right. (laughs) I'm ready for like a pot to come and hit me in the head or a baseball bat. Uh, Matt, I want to, I want to talk to you about your career and your your profession as an actor i and and as you know as i told you before we started recording this you know our audience are business owners and entrepreneurs i i listen to podcasts of other actors okay that talk and we're talking about people that are in their 50s and 60s uh-huh. that they talk about the anxieties they still feel the depression they go through, the rejection that they have, you know, have dealt with, um, the fear that they still have of getting where, I mean, it is a really brutal profession. And yet here you are, you know, decades into this profession in a great place, successful marriage, kids, you know, I mean, you, you, you just seem like a very happy and contented person. I know, you know, you know, I'm sure you have your good days and your bad, but, I just, as a business owner, as somebody myself who goes through my own ups and downs, you know, I, you know, facing rejection, facing challenges, all that kind of stuff. How do you deal? How do you deal with, you know, the bad and the production? How do you deal with those days when you do get rejected or you're disappointed, which I'm sure has had to happen well, quite a lot. Rejection comes 
Honestly, every day. I mean, any time that you're putting yourself out there, uh, you're setting yourself up, especially in my business, for rejection. I, I think I've learned. It's interesting to hear you say, Gene, that you speak to actors in their yeah. 50s and 60s. Yeah. Still feeling that sort of fear and that rejection. It's gotten better for me. It's subsided over the years because I I mean, I've been doing this professionally now for 43 years, uh, which is I mean, that longevity, I think, is what I hold more dear than anything. The fact that I'm still working uh, and, and, and still out there going to bat uh, because and, and the fear and the rejection has sort of subsided for me. And I think it's because I think age comes into that. Wisdom comes into that. The success that I've had comes into that. My, Mary, my wife, uh, is a big part of that. I've learned over the years, uh, the, the times that it was tough, when the rejection will probably hit a little closer to home than maybe other projects did, because there are certain projects you really feel like, my gosh, I got this, and I'm going to, I want to be a part of this, and it doesn't come through. Uh, my wife took the hit on a lot of that for me. Uh, she absorbed a lot of that, um, which that was a realization that I made not too long ago. So that's another gift that I've had. So, um, you know, you put yourself out there uh, and uh, I, I love what I do. I, I, I've i never had a plan B. Uh, I, I remember wanting to do this when I was about 14 years old and um, started doing it when I was 18 professionally. Mm -hmm. and I realized I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, when I was out on the road doing musical comedy. So I went back to school in New York and learned how to do what I'm doing and, and give myself some sort of foundation. Uh, I think all of these small business owners you're talking about, uh, they didn't jump into anything without planning and getting a foundation uh, with what they wanted to move forward on. And that's what I felt like I was lacking when I first started out. So going back and getting that foundation in New York uh, at the Great Neighborhood Playhouse on 54th Street in New York gave me that foundation. So mm -hmm. my, uh, my family's been a big part of helping me get through any sort of tough times. There were really, there were lean times for sure. Uh, there were times where we almost put our home on the market because we couldn't, uh, we couldn't keep up uh, with the payments. And then a job would come along. Mm -hmm. uh, things would come along. I felt like the universe has taken pretty good care of me through the years. And uh, I, I hope uh, I hope people feel that as well in their lives. You know, um, you you yourself were a business owner. I mean, you've, you've been an entrepreneur all of your life. It's not like you're an employee uh, for anybody. You have gone from job to job and got in and you get a check for doing that job. I mean, you're no different. Starting than over. Any, a brand, a brand yeah, new job. And starting over each time. So it's you're no different than any freelancer or any you know, any contractor that does work who goes from job to job. One of the biggest, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges that a lot of, you know, particularly sole entrepreneurs have um, is they're working on a job and they're uh -huh. focused on that job and then the job ends and then they're like, oh no, I don't have any more job. <laughs> I, I, I feel else. that, oh no, I'm right there with them because I think every actor will tell you that once that job ends, you go, well, that's pretty much it. They're on to me. And uh, I think De Niro even spoke about that uh, when one job in. I mean, yeah. everybody, whatever level you're at, uh, Gene, everybody is still has that insecurity. Uh, yeah. We're all just I mean, we all sort of harken back to when we started out. And when's the next job coming? When is the job, any job coming? So I think I think actors, people in my business feel that on whatever level they're at. Um, you, and so you're right. It's a brand new job every time for me. Did you do anything, you know, as when, when you were younger and, 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 and doing this work um, to ensure that you, you did have that next job? I'm like kind of curious, like if you were, were you so focused on the one acting job that you were just saying, well, Providence will provide when I'm done or, you know, were you still going on auditions and still working yeah. on, the yeah. future while you were still well you're talking about faith i think Gene. <laughs> yeah faith, is it. Faith, faith that you uh you, you like to think one thing leads to another i mean i've had i've had big projects in my past um hand that rocks the cradle was a very big turning point for me in a sense uh which was about 30 years ago when 
that movie made such noise that I wrote on those coattails for six or seven years doing other movies. LA mm-hmm. Confidential was like that. And, and recently, other stuff that I've done, Silicon Valley, Jack Ryan, things like that. There are certain projects that sort of hit a different level and people say they, they you know, they want to work with you. But I, I don't think you can do anything except just do the best work that you can do to then sort of, uh, you know, you're in the lap of the gods that people are going to pick up on that work and see the work that you've done and they want to work with you. Uh, so it's it's hard to ensure anything down the road except to do the best work that you can do. Uh, so it's a goofy business, Gene. It, it really is. It's a. Uh, yeah, it, it is. Unknown. And I, I hear that advice, you know, from others and it, it makes sense, you know, to such an extent. I mean, you can only control what you can control. Right. Sure. Um, and, and that's what you do. And, and you hope that if you're doing good work, you know, that, you know, things. And a lot, of times like. that, a lot of times that doesn't, you know, I, I, I've had a series of auditions over the last couple of months where I, uh, I thought, well, should I just probably head right to the set after I turn this in, you know, because our business has gone through a really seismic shift in the last couple of years. COVID changed everything. So we're in a little bit of a silo now. I don't go into a room anymore to meet people for yeah. a job. And yeah. I, I love going into a room to meet people. I am in my uh, office uh, putting something on tape and sending it to a producer. Now, COVID has changed this business, and I don't know that we'll ever go back uh, yeah. because these producers and directors can see so many more people now with the way that it's set up. So there's been a real shift in our business. So in a sense, that out there, and you know, I'll, I'll, you spoke about this briefly. What can you do to facilitate the next job? It used to be able that you could go out there and sort of network a little bit, and, and that networking has changed as well. Uh, mm. That, uh, as I say, I don't go into a room anymore, and uh, that was half the fun for me was just meeting a producer or a director, because you never know if you're not right for one thing, then they'll keep you in mind maybe for something else down the road. Uh, which is a great bit of advice because even, you know, even when rejected, even when you're doing this, you know, the networking is so important because particularly yeah. it's, it's not just in your profession, but I think it's in any profession. Um, it, it's all in who, you know, and, and, you know, the network is life is like that, isn't it? It has a lot to do with it, Gene. And, uh, one thing that has changed here with the streaming that we have now within my business, yeah. you never know who's up at two or three in the morning watching something from four or five years ago or something like yeah. that says, geez, that guy would be good. Or that guy, like, geez, I forgot all about them. So, uh, you know, with what I do, it can change. Honestly, in a single day, uh, things can change. And uh, I, I think that's the faith I have. I think that's the hope I have. I like living on that. I mean, it's all I've ever known and it's all my family's ever known. Sure. I spoke about this with friends uh, just a couple of days ago that, you know, our kids never knew when when things were slow uh, because, you know, Mary and I, we would always just find a way to get through it. Right. And, uh, uh, so to this day, they don't know whether <laughs> dad's working or is he just really a bum? Uh, because yeah. he seems to be home quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> dad's home. Well, I talked to them and I don't think you want to know what the answer is to that question. So. <laughs> Um, so we we try to maintain a certain level of yeah. uh, consistency. Uh, I mean, we had three kids. My kids are 35, 33, and 30 now. So uh, they've got their own families. And uh, I, th- I think they look back on it now and they're grateful <laughs> yeah. that they didn't have to go through what Mary and I were going through. So just to speak on that, because it's it's what you've gone through again is is not uncommon to any independent entrepreneur, any independent freelancer. Um, tell me what you've learned about money as an independent, you know, entrepreneur. Um, because, like you said, I mean, there have been times where cash was really tight, and if you had to go back and give yourself some some cash management lessons, um, what would they have been? Well, I. The one lesson that I learned not that long ago, probably 12 or 13 years ago, I had a business manager for 30 years of the first 30 years of my career. And they were wonderful folks, wonderful folks. But what I did, I disassociated myself with 
the money. I, uh, la, 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 la. I just didn't, yeah. I, 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 I wasn't as involved as I should have been. Uh, they would send, they would send, here's what came in, which was smaller than here's what went out. Uh, but I, uh, so about 12, 13 years ago, Mary and I took ownership of our money. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, so I, I think that would be the advice that I think I would have given myself uh, much, much earlier uh, to be involved and um, to pay attention. Uh, and, the, and these folks were wonderful, but uh, I, uh, I, I wasn't paying attention. Didn't you find, I mean, when, when you did take over, the, you know, you, you know your, your financial management, that it really wasn't that big of a mystery i mean you you, you figured Gene, it out you're right, right? On, you're right on the nose and they even said to me at the time this business management firm they said you know you can do this and i i there was a freedom in it as well too yeah um and it was a conversation between mary and i do you want to do this or do you want me to do this and you know thankfully she said she'd do it uh but i there was a great freedom in it uh there really was i felt like my gosh, everything was right in front of us. And that freedom we felt with being in charge uh, right. was really a, a wonderful moment. I wished we'd have done it sooner, but, uh, you know, timing's uh, the timing is what it is. So, yeah, it, it was a really uh, great, great feeling. And I, you, you've spoken to people in the past that had that same uh, sort yeah. of relief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because uh, you know what I've learned. I'm, uh, by the way, I'm a, I'm an accountant, uh, and I uh, it, it, what I I'm not that smart a guy. Like, it's not that hard to well, do I'm right accounting and financial management. You'll so. be I'll be I'll be behind you, Gene. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, um, Matt. I, I I have to ask about also when you you throughout your stages of your career, um, there are different jobs that are presented to you. Um, were you the kind of guy that took on anything or were you more selective about the roles that you chose? Did you ever find yourself in situations where you were taking risks and doing things that were sort of out of your comfort zone? And I'm, I'm wondering if, if what the result of all of that was. Yeah, uh, there have been a couple of those. I mean, I have to be honest with you, Gene. I think uh, turning things down or maybe being a little bit more particular it was dictated by where I was in my life, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, with jobs and things, because I'll tell you a very quick story. When I, <laughs> when I got married, I moved my wife from New Jersey to, and by the way, marry a Jersey girl, because they're really pretty wonderful. I'm from uh, Philadelphia, so I know plenty okay. of Jersey girls. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I moved my wife from New Jersey to Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, well, she was living in New York at the time. And a month yeah. after we got married, I got a job back in New York for a month. Opposite the woman I'd been living with prior to getting married. OK. <laughs> now, my wife said, <laughs> Sounds comfortable. turn that job down. <laughs> and I said, I said, honey, we're dealing with very limited talent here, so we're probably going to take this job, you know. So <laughs> that's probably what I should have turned down, and I didn't, and it all worked out great. But yeah. it's sort of dictated by the times, you know, whether things are slow or um, – I, I went through a period where I was a little bit more picky after I had success, and my uh, there was probably a little bit more shine on whatever star I've ever had. Uh, but uh, – uh, I, I I I don't I can't remember an experience where something that I uh, got involved with turned out badly. It uh, yeah. I've really been I've had a really blessed life. I've really worked with remarkable people. I've never had really really bad experiences with folks at all. Now sometimes the project turns out different than you had right. envisioned it. You know you you get into something and uh, I, I've been in a couple of projects where I shot what I thought was the script and they've changed things afterwards. And that's been frustrating uh, right. because the project takes a turn that, that you didn't sign on for. Um, but uh, man, I, I, I've been a lucky guy. When you were working um, for, and again, you're independent here. Um, you know, you're, these are your customers, the people that are hiring you to do 
uh, you know, whatever roles that you were doing and the projects that you were working on, how did you deal with people that you did not necessarily get along with or that you disagreed with? Um, did you, you know, did you find yourself just saying, listen, you know, this is just what you got to do to, to, to make this person happy? Well, you're, you're speaking about a producer or a director or somebody like that, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, with what I do, Gene, it's a very collaborative effort. I mean, I, I try to, I, 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 I know that I'm no more important than the makeup artist. I mean, you're, you're put in a little bit of a silo as, as an actor. You're the one that's in front of the camera. But I right. really try to keep in mind that I'm no more important than anybody on the set because it is such a collaborative effort. And all of these people that are around me are there to make me look good. That's right. really whether it's the DP or whether it's the grip or the makeup or hair or anything like that. So I um, I, I know how lucky I am. I, I, I know how lucky I am to be in the position that I'm in. Uh, you, you're always going to have disagreements with directors because you're going to have a, a vision of how a scene should play out. And maybe he has a different version or vision of that, you know. So right. uh, the collaboration is really what I find more wonderful than anything else because uh, we're all working towards something we're all working towards a goal here and um, if I can uh, contribute in that way and uh, I, I'm just there you know an actor is there to really serve the director we really are he's the one that's been right. living with it and the writer right. um, which you know we desperately want to come back to work here um, so I, I'm there to serve the script and the director and uh, and and uh, hopefully make the project better. Great attitude to have. I only have a couple more questions for you. I mean, you've, you've been I, I great and love this. Yeah. Well, your 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 insights are just so valuable um, to me personally, and I, I know also to our audience. Um, you know, one thing I didn't you know ask you about, and again, we're talking business owner to business owner here is uh -huh. your comp your competition. You know, I mean, I I have some clients that wring their hands over their competition. I have some clients that ignore their competition. I have some clients that study their competition. Over the years, how have you dealt with other actors that going after the same roles, you know, um, as you, where that you might have won or lost out to them? Yeah. Um, have, have, how do you how have you dealt with your competition? Well, I, I don't I don't know that I've ever looked at it as competition. I mean, it, uh, okay. There are so many ways, Gene, that uh, there are so many reasons why you don't get the job. Uh, I mean, and, and 99 times out of 100, I think any producer or director or casting director would tell you it has nothing to do with the work that you did. It's you're too tall or you're too short or you're too heavy or you're blonde or you're a little too old. Yeah. Or, uh, I'm going to hire my cousin or there are so many things. There are so many variables with within my business. I, I've got friends that say, I don't know how anybody gets a job uh, <laughs> because it's really hard to get a job. I came up with a lot of great folks that are uh, that are just killing it out there. Brian Cranston, one. He's a uh, he's a guy that Brian and I started together uh, back in the uh, early 80s together. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, Brian is out there doing so many wonderful things and boy it couldn't happen to a nicer guy he's just aces he really is mm -hmm. so i don't think i've looked at it as competition you do the work you do the best that you can do on the day and you really have to forget it uh because and a lot of times i've been so lucky that really things have come back to me as a yes and as we we certainly like to work with you um but i think you have to look at the work that you put in on that day as you did the best you could, let it go. And, and that's taken me a while to learn as well, Gene. That's not something I'm not speaking um, like this was a can of corn. Uh, yeah. I'm speaking with having been in the business as long as I've been in it. Uh, I don't think I'd trade that uh, youth for the wisdom that I have now uh, because the wisdom serves me far better. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I feel the same way. I don't, I mean, I'm in my late 50s now and um, it is. Uh, you, I, I, I wouldn't want to be 30 years younger. I really, yeah, you, know, you feel, you, right? yeah, right. I mean, as long as you have your health, I mean, you just knowing what you know now, um, you view the world that much differently and with a, so much more peace 
you know, than when I was that much younger. Yeah, boy, you're, know, you're, the same way. you're, you're speaking the truth there. I, I could agree with you. There is a piece that comes uh, with age. Uh, are you a married guy, a family, yeah. kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as, uh, same, you know, I have three kids, you know, as well. Um, and that's uh-huh. the other thing. I mean, again, when, you know, you go through, I, I, I look at people that have young kids and I think of all the issues that they go through, all the things are, you know, that, that are coming, you know, down their yeah. way and well, you make coming. it through and you enjoy it. Right. But well, you know, my it, kids, my yeah. kids have kids now. My son has three. We just yeah. had a new grand, new granddaughter last week. Congratulations. Uh, up in the I'm Seattle. Envious. And my daughter has two and, uh, my youngest, uh, is getting married in November here in Los Angeles, very small. But, you know, I look at my son with three and he's 35. I mean, I've been there. You've been there. Yeah. Uh, this grandparenting is a pretty good gig because yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all in and then we're all out. And yeah. uh, so, but I look at him and I try to talk to him. He's a really wonderful kid and we're very, very close. I was the best man at his wedding, which I think if you could pick a better day, I don't know that you could pick one better than that uh, to be your son's best man. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, but you know, you, you sort of forget too, don't you, Gene? When you look, but yeah. when I look at my son and my blur. daughter taking care of these fit these kids, I, you know, I turn to Mary and I go, "Man, how did we do? It? You you just do it, <laughs> and you forget how you did it." Uh, I know. Every day know. is like Groundhog Day, you know, and. Uh, but, you know, I, we, we've really been really blessed, too, with the partners our kids have chosen. And hopefully you'll realize that one day, too, with your kids, if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, really- we're in the midst of, of experiencing that as well. And, and so far, so good. I, I mean, so, you know, I mean, wrapping things up, Matt, you, you know, you've done great. All right. I mean, you, you, you have lived a great life. You've been very successful as an actor. I mean, you, you have a lot to be grateful for. Um, and you've managed to balance your work and your family life somehow in a in a really difficult profession, a very demanding profession. Whereas here you are at this point in your life and, you know, everyone is together in good shape. And I guess I just my, my question is, and there's, there's no one answer to this, but what what advice do you have for others that are in demanding professions like yours that also have you know, demands of their their families and their personal lives? You know, to sort of keep it all together, what did you do over the past 30 years or what combination of things did you do that, uh, you know, that that worked for you to, to get you to where you are now? Oh, boy, Gene, I I, I, I put it off to to dumb luck. And once I, I would put it you off. Got, to, you know, you're going to give a better answer than that. It can't be know, all dumb luck. I put it off to um, the marriage that I'm in, the relationship that I'm in. I, I would um, uh, I would uh, you know if you, if you want to I, I would also put it off to surrounding myself with like people like yeah. myself and um, I've got some remarkable people in my life and I think you know there's an old saying if you want to smell sweet you surround yourself with the seller of perfume and I have I have got those people around me every day of my life. Uh, people that think like I do, uh, want to help anybody they can help in any way, which is, uh, I, I live my life with gratitude uh, from the second I get up in the morning uh, till when I go to bed because I know what I have. I don't take for granted what I have. And um, I've written myself of people that, uh, you know that that don't that don't that don't live that way. I, I sure. uh, a gratitude is is the uh, is the only way to go. Um, and going out of your way for somebody is the straightest path I know. And uh, that's uh, that's where I start my day, and it's where I end my day. And uh, I, I'm the luckiest guy, Gene, you'll ever meet. And uh, <laughs> my luck took a, an even greater turn with the folks from the Hartford. And I mean that sincerely. And uh, so, uh, you know, um, you're looking at uh, really uh, the luckiest guy in the world. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining me. I loved our conversation. I learned a lot as a, as a business owner. 
Um, <laughs> well, you're great right advice to share. I don't know about that, but uh, I, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed talking to you. I could talk to you all day, and uh, it's uh, you're you're, uh, you're a, an accountant. You have a small business as well. I mean, your business. I do. Yeah, I have, I have ten employees, and uh, it's a financial services firm outside of Philadelphia. So uh-huh. um, we um, I've been doing that for about twenty five years and loving it. So. And we we have that much in common is that we both have good, strong family lives with good, you know, good spouses and good kids and all that. And good people around. Yeah. And good people around. It's really important. Yeah. Matt, thank you very much. We really appreciate your time. Gene, thank you so much for reaching out. It it meant the world to me and I appreciate it so much. Good thing. Hold on for a minute. Everybody, I've been speaking to Matt McCoy, an actor and a spokesperson for The Hartford Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Gene Marks. You have been watching and listening to the Hartford Small Biz Ahead podcast. If you need any help or tips or advice in running your business, please join us at smallbizahead.com or sba.thehartford.com. Again, thanks. We will see you again soon. Take care.